Hey everyone, and welcome back to Open. Our last guest is a Puerto Rican Bronx born and raised poet and spoken word artist whose poetry critiques pop culture with the harsh realities of colonization and the price of the American dream. He regularly performs at venues throughout New York City and Jersey, but you know, since the pandemic, he's been performing virtually with other creatives within the artistic community. Here to share more with us, we welcome poet and spoken word artist Raymond Camacho, the Coqui poet. Hello, welcome. Hi. Thank you for having me. Oh my God, I'm so excited to be here. This is wonderful. Oh, Thank you. Oh, it's uh, we're excited to have you. I mean, I think we get excited just knowing that we're able to share space uh, with our fellow artists in in, in yes. this that in this realm of like you know what I know that right now our uh, in person gatherings are still being uh, limited. But at least we have this means of, of, of connecting, right? And so my Absolutely. first question to you, my first question to you to yes. share with viewers, please. Is, um, you know, how did you become the Koki poet? So I love that question. I became the Koki poet through performing at the New York Poets Cafe. I started performing back in 2020. And when I would perform, I wasn't a big name. Nobody knew me. And I always, I'm Puerto Rican and, and proud. And I love the Koki. So when I would write poetry about decolonizing Puerto Rico, or the beauty of our island, I have the Koki playing in the background. Every, every time I would perform, the Koki was there. And eventually, when I started to perform in person with the New York and Poets Cafe, people started like doing the Koki sound and cheering me and calling me the Koki poet. So I just learned to embrace it. Oh, beautiful. How awesome. How awesome. So it's such an honor. Viewers what, what the Koki uh, symbolizes because we know what the Koki is, but I don't know if they know what the Koki is. Yes, the Koki is Puerto Rico's mascots are frog the loudest frog in the world named after a taino leader the coqui is resilient and powerful but it also reminds us of, of home because the coqui is our native frog and it's sound can i play it sound it's so gorgeous i would love you oh too. my are you god kidding me? I, I love yes. you and you're right that that's how you know you're home. Well, at least that's not how I know I'm home. Um, oh my just God, by the yes. sound of it. Yeah, play it, play it, play it. So Please. Because it has its own unique, and the only exists in Puerto Rico and Hawaii. Beautiful. I recorded that in Jabu Yabucoa. Um, I went to Puerto Rico in September and traveled around the entire island from San Juan to Arecibo, to Rincón, to Lajas, to base El Junque, all around the island and being surrounded by the Coqui, being home, it was beautiful. I just, I can't wait to go back. <laughs> so so, so while, Such you an honor. There, while you were there, since you had the, the, uh, the actual sound of the Coqui, were you reciting to their rhythm as opposed to having people uh, you know, chant the coqui sound to your rhythm? Of course, and this coqui is from Puerto Rico. I recorded this myself. I I actually got to hold the coqui um, and really? it got to record it. It was beautiful. Yes, it was beautiful. I had such a great experience. And I think it for me, like when I do want to write poetry now, I just put on this coqui sound and I just write and it just comes out. It flows like the river. I'm so grateful. And so I, I understand when you are first uh, just breaking it down for us that the coqui sound is something that you would use inside of your work. So is it part mm -hmm. of all of your work? No, not part of everything. Um, there is a poem that I have that I actually say the coqui and I call its name. It's a very intense poem, um, but I, sometimes I just use the coqui sound when I feel it. Sometimes I don't need to put it in a poem because sometimes the poem is very intense um, and it doesn't really need the goki in it. Um, and sometimes the poem needs it. It doesn't have to be about Puerto Rico, but the goki sound, I put it in because it's beautiful and it's life and it's love. And it reminds me that I am poetry and art and connected. Yeah, and it's also therapeutic too, right? Oh, so therapeutic. Oh, 
to me, it's like, this is my, I, I'm used to it because of my poetry, but when people hear the coqui, other Puerto Ricans, they're like, coqui, coqui. I'm like, yes, everyone, they have their own spin on it. They all love it. We all love it. And so where have you been since the, the pandemic? Like, I mean, like mentally, and as I introduced you performing virtually, and I know everything is gradually reopening. And as you mentioned, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you uh, were, I guess, uh, crowned or with this moniker at the New Rican Poets Cafe, some someplace very familiar to us, to me personally, because I had a residency at the New Rican Poets Cafe back wow. in like 2006. Yeah, I'm dating myself. <laughs> oh, wow, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I should be interviewing you next. <laughs> Love that, it's beautiful. And I and I know um, Caridad de la Luz, La Bruja, also continues yeah. to host the open mics virtually. So, like, where have you been in all of this? Uh, and, you know, just the, this whole transition of us just acclimating to this being our, our way of communicating. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, I'm grateful for the pandemic. The pandemic has been hard on everyone, especially artists. We all, we've, I think everyone's been through the ringer when it comes to the pandemic. But because of that, us poets and the creative scene got together, we connected. It's normal now. We've been doing this for two years. This is normal, we love it. Being online and virtual. And with the New York and Poets Cafe, that's how I started performing there virtually. I was not gonna perform in person. I was way too nervous. I was just like, I just write poetry. I just wanna read it. Um, and now it was a big step. Now I do spoken word and now I love to read and perform. And I'm just so grateful the pandemic um, it's been hard. Mentally has been hard um, and it's scary, but there's so much beauty to be found in it. So much beauty. I'm so grateful for that. Really Wonderful. Am. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you for sharing the silver lining behind all of it, because that's what we're doing. We're trying to, we're trying mm -hmm. to celebrate the, the silver lining from what yes. we were doing. And on top of that, you guys, he is going to bless us with a piece. So um, thank you once again, Raymond Camacho, the Coquito. Thank poet. you. And you guys don't go anywhere because when we return, like I said, Raymond Camacho, the Coquito poet, he's going to perform for us after the break. <laughs> 